landscapes are incredible and they're understudied part of our world because oftentimes it's difficult to access, set up equipment, and study all of what we would want to study about a mountain system. Uh, a lot of mountain regions are protected, which is wonderful, but that protection limits what we can do. So this is an incredible opportunity to partner with a land ma management agency, the Bureau of Land Management and the Gunnison Office. Partnerships are a huge component of what we do with BLM. Uh, we've got a lot of partnerships with other universities, with conservation corps, things like that. Um, and it really just gives us the capacity to learn a lot more about our landscapes than we otherwise have the capacity for. And what we really emphasize with partnerships is it's got a benefit for the folks who are actually out there doing the work. So all these students are gaining really marketable skills. We're kind of um, helping build the next generation of land stewards through working with students. We know that the earth is warming. We know that mountain regions are warming faster than most regions of the earth. And how resilient are they? There are very varied perspectives about the resilience of mountain regions. Permafrost is perennially frozen soil. So all of the soil, all of the ground beneath it going down several meters is completely frozen. And then in the summertime, the surface thaws. But if we can find some of it on this trip and start mapping it at a small scale, then we can zoom out and start looking at what permafrost is on a larger scale up here. So if we know how much permafrost there is and we know how much organic carbon is in that permafrost, we can start to make predictions of how much carbon will be released with warming climates. Okay, so this is an alpine stream. And as this stream comes down out of the higher mountains up here, it's eroding sediments. And the fact that we've got these hummocks on the landscape where this is a little bit higher, and then you've got this little hole here, that when permafrost, the active layer goes up, it heaves in the winter and then goes down in the summer, and then sometimes even at night, diurnal cycles, it does that. So this is a good spot for it. Yeah, this is my senior project. I'm really interested in this because as the climate is changing and warming up, the permafrost layers are beginning to thaw, and that thawing process is releasing more carbon into the atmosphere. And so by learning how much this is occurring, we can find better ways to combat this. Um, so permafrost is pretty well understood in the Arctic, Alaska, Greenland, and places like that, but there really isn't any studies on them out here in the Rocky Mountains. So um, it seemed like really cutting edge science and um, I really wanted to be a part of it. Um, I'd say mainly I'm, I'm definitely a hands-on learner, so actually seeing and doing things <laughs> will do, do me way better than actually trying to read a textbook. And then also you can't really replace that. It kind of helps you narrow down what you want to do in life. And So on this trip I'm hoping to provide support for Heidi Seltzer as well as my own senior seminar project which includes studying climate change refugia in the um, San Juan Alpine ecosystems. So we have these three newer um, marble grave markers around here, but right in the middle of the three of them, there's this pile of rock and these bits of cut and formed wood planks. Probably what we're looking at are these bits of wood or what's left of the original grave markers from 1877, 1881. When the, the new markers were put in, the debris that was left over from the original grave markers was piled here in the middle. And that's why we see this unusual cluster of, of rocks in this cut and shaped wood here. It's a mined landscape, a landscape with high recreational use, a landscape with um, active sheep grazing and sheep grazing allotments. So it creates an opportunity where we can study how do all these different ways that uh, people access and use mountain systems come together to influence water quality and the headwaters of the animus. Yeah, I think that that's, that's what our department is all about, is interdisciplinary, transdisciplinary, cross-disciplinary research. So getting folks out here to study 
um, the sheep grazing, to study what's going on with the water, to study the soils, to study the ancient human history. You know, it paints a really uh, cool picture and an interesting story of this environment. Durango and Fort Lewis especially really draw in amazing people because they love being outside just as much as us and so it's really easy to relate to them and they're more than happy to talk to us about all this stuff and all the people that I've met are just super genuine and really passionate about what they do. And this is one of the most wonderful collaborations I've really been a part of. Um, seeing uh, the number of young scientists out here um, and what they're learning, what they're seeing. So this is our our type of lab setting here, right? And that's a unique opportunity for a lot of undergrads that you don't get uh, many other places. I would call it a classroom. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. No scientist is going to become a scientist just doing rote work. You have to get out and actually see the landscapes that you care about and start thinking about scientific concepts while doing them. Yeah, I don't know, to me this work it brings hope uh, towards the future instead of kind of the gloom and doom behind the climate crisis, so. So this is really cutting edge work that you're doing here. I mean, you never know, but hopefully, um, from my mind, it's the explore side. It's the um, go out, step into the, you know, and see what we find. And the students all this week in my class and in Jared's class were like, what if we don't find permafrost? And we're like, that's a story too.